Hello everybody, this is Money Mom. Welcome back to the channel. Tuesday, usual, I do personal growth this night, but today I want to talk to you guys about my adoption story, the untold story, because I have not shared this with any of you, and to be honest, many of my friends don't even know this information. So I'm sharing it with you guys for the first time, so let me get started. Many of you might already know that I was adopted when I was a baby. I was three weeks old. And I've always felt very loved by the parents that have adopted me. My mother is no longer living. She passed away three years ago. My father is still living, and he lives in Sun City, Arizona. I was adopted because my parents could not have children of their own. And back then, they weren't really sure what the reason was. But they put in to adopt a baby through Catholic Charities and were able to get me, which was a real blessing to them and also to me. I want to first start off saying this. I really feel like my parents that adopted me are my family. They have sacrificed so much for me. They've always been there for me. They've basically, you know, just been very um, loving. They've been very loyal. They have, you know, put me first in everything. And they always made me feel very, very special. As a matter of fact, they always thought I was so adorable and cute and I entertained people. The problem is, is when I got out there in the real world, I didn't understand why not everyone else thought I was adorable and cute. But my parents just always made me feel very special. And my dad even said, you were chosen. And the adoption agency told my family, make sure to tell her she's adopted. Well, I didn't look anything like my, my parents that adopted me, so it was good that they told me. And my dad, and I don't remember him doing this, when I was five years old, my parents sat down with me, and I guess I kind of didn't understand it at the time, told me I was adopted and that it was extra special because I was chosen. And, you know, that, like I said, I've always been made to feel very loved, and I've always been treated really well by my parents. So I want to say that first. Now, a lot of other adopted children that I've met over the years, and my parents, as, as a matter of fact, my godmother has two children. Her and her husband could not have children, and they adopted a boy and a girl. My mom and dad, who I consider my mom and dad, adopted two girls. And I won't get into the story of my sister at this time. That's a whole different story, but um, she's two years younger. So they adopted two children. I don't know about the boy, but the girl who was the oldest, who's two years older than me, that's my godmother's daughter, she went and searched for her biological mother. And I have to say that anyone that I know of, not the people that I personally know, that have gone looking for their birth parents and have found them, not that the people were rude, but some of them were already, you know, had their life going. And it, it was difficult on the whole family to have that happen. You know to have somebody come and search for you so I never searched you know when I was in my 20s I never searched for my biological family but number one I was afraid of being rejected by them and if I did find them and number two the other reason why is because my mom and dad sacrificed everything to give me the best life that they could and they you know they put me first I really felt like I did not want them to feel I was rejecting them because they you know like I said, they were very giving, loving people. So I didn't want to hurt them. And I think it would have really hurt my mom if I would have searched for my biological parents. So I never did. Well, a few a couple years ago, after my mom passed away, I decided to contact the, the Catholic Charities and see what I could find out. Now, you can pay, and it was quite costly, to get information about your parents. But and they would contact your family to see if they wanted to talk to you. I didn't do that. But what I did do is I got non-identifying information. That means I wouldn't be able to contact my parents. And anything that my mother wanted me to know, my biological mother, are on these slips of paper. And that's what I'm going to share with you. Like I said, I've never met my biological mother or my biological father or any biological family. I've never met them. But like I said, I do have a two-part video to this, and you'll understand why. Now I'm going to share with you what I learned from this my birth family. First of all, my name is Dawn Marie. My name that my biological mother wanted to give me was Karen Ann. And I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I was 8 pounds and a half an ounce. 
uh, 20 inches and um, my birth mother was in labor for 13 hours and 50 minutes uh, that was a long time um, and following a full-term pregnancy I was described as a normal newborn so I guess I was very healthy um, let's see I guess I was an attractive baby with a small amount of medium brown hair and a round face I was baptized Catholic at the uh, hospital or right afterwards so that's one of the things now I've got some interesting stuff to share with you guys in here so just hold on um, my birth mother identified my birth father by name but he was not involved in the adoption process so I thought you would find that interesting my mother was single she was 23 years old she was born in Minnesota she was Catholic she was five foot three and a half and 130 pounds her eye color was blue her hair was brown she her complexion was medium fair Caucasian she was German Lithuanian English and Scotch according to this my and love this one and my daughter even laughed at this my birth mother was described as pudgy and sturdy and had rather large features with a round face my daughter says do you think you're sturdy well I am pudgy and sturdy you wouldn't be able to knock me over let me just tell you that it's funny though because she's five foot three and a half I'm five four and 130 pounds how many of you think 130 pounds is pudgy at five foot three and a half nowadays that's considered on the slender side isn't it my birth um, it says your birth mother was described as a sound and sensible and capable at the same time innocent your birth mother graduated from high school with a C average then like look what it says about college it says your birth mother was trained as a licensed practical nurse at the hospital she attained an A minus average she worked as a licensed practical nurse in intensive care and pediatrics her my birth mother enjoyed swimming sewing horseback riding and dancing she was in good health she didn't have other children now this is interesting I thought you guys would find this my birth mother lived in her own apartment during her pregnancy and continued to work as a nurse until delivery she was capable of managing things herself she planned to return to nursing after the delivery through the uh, pregnancy she was determined to place me up for adoption briefly after my birth she had misgivings but she assured the case worth worker she wanted to place me in an adoptive home now this is very interesting it's more about my grandparents my birth mother's my birth mother's mother died when my so my grandmother I'll just refer to her as grandmother died when my birth mother was 15 and she was placed in foster care my birth mother stated that my mother's death was a blessing because she was treated badly my birth mother's father was an alcoholic and birth mother recalled an unhappy childhood so she dated a married man so my birth mother dated a married man whom she really loved and described as kind and wonderful when that affair ended my birth mother met my birth father through mutual friends she dated him on and off and didn't realize he was married my birth mother regarded him as a rather undesirable person and didn't want anything to do with him so my birth father did not offer any kind of help he was married separated with three children so my birth father was 26 separated he was catholic six foot two weighed 190 large bone structure eye color blue curly dark hair complexion fair caucasian and he was german my birth father was described as good looking big and husky he completed the eighth grade and left school because he had to help the family he was a press operator for an advertising he was described as very intelligent and uh, very charming and he had three other children my birth father knew of the birth mother's pregnancy but according to the birth mother had an indifferent attitude and did nothing to assist her so that is something also my biological mother had a foster mother and the foster mother didn't want anything to do with the pregnancy either and as a matter of fact she wanted to hide it from everyone and didn't want anyone to know now remember I was born in 1965 so during that time you know secrets make you sick that kind of thing right guys you know a lot of people didn't talk about that stuff also my biological mother 
did my my biological mother's mother, her, my grandmother, died at 41 from a heart condition and pneumonia because she had all sorts of allergies, and she had an eighth grade education. My birth, my grandfather, um, I guess, was he healthy and he was a farmer, and he had a seventh or eighth grade education. So that tells you a little bit about that. So this, and then also my birth mother also had one brother and one sister. And the brother was engaged, but he also didn't have much education. Sounds like many people in the family, I don't know if this was common back then, didn't complete even high school education. So when I got this, I don't know if this is all totally accurate, but I thought it was very interesting. People ask, Dawn, do you wish you would know your birth family? Part of me says yes, but part of me says no. Because number one, when you're raised by wonderful parents, at least this is how I feel about my parents. Uh, and I feel this way about anyone that's in my world. Whether it's my daughter, my husband, my friends. I would not want to do anything to hurt anybody. It's extremely important in all my relationships to be trustworthy, loyal, loving, kind, generous. And if I would hurt anyone in any way, that would just be devastating for me. And so... I never thought it was that important to look for my birth family because I felt like God gave me the adopted family that I have. And I'm so grateful to have them. I wanted to share this story with you because I know many people out there are adopted. I'd love to know if any of you are adopted and how you feel about it. If you were to sum it up in one word how I feel about being adopted, number one, I'm grateful to the mother that gave me up for adoption. I know I don't even know if she's still alive. I think she'd be 78 right now. But I'm extremely grateful to her because she did a difficult thing. I could just tell that she was a good person, a hard worker. And it just sounded like, you know, she was kind of innocent. And she just probably, because she didn't have a loving mother, she was searching for love. All of us want to be loved. And she was searching in the wrong places, unfortunately. But she sounds like she was a good person. I'm grateful to her and I'm grateful to my mom and my dad for adopting me and giving me a loving home. A loving, clean home with good food and good advice and just people that were always there for me. And they said no matter what, no matter what you do, even if it's something that's, that's not good that you do, don't ever be afraid to come to us. We are always your parents. We always love you unconditionally no matter what. And that sure goes a long way in my book. I don't know if any of you would ever search for your real parents if you're adopted. And I know many people do and the outcome can be really great. And I wish everybody, the any of my biological family that's out there, I wish them all the happiness with their family like I've received with mine. My one word to describe all of this is I'm extremely grateful and I'm extremely blessed. That's all I have to say. I hope you don't mind the longer video. Before I sign off, stay tuned for part two of what happened to me and who I connected with after I did my DNA with Ancestry.com because the story continues. This is Money Mom signing off, and as always, I love you. Bye-bye.